Hi, this is Zach. Those that have been following my video will know that I've had this pictured mini Talon here for a bit over two years. And unfortunately, about a month ago, I ran out of power. And the reason for that is that the voltage reading in the bottom left corner there, 13.1 volts, was actually incorrect. And uh, I took my goggles off to uh, have a look around for a place to land it. And I didn't realize at the time that uh, the voltage was so low that the flight controller was browning out. And interestingly, it did actually level out from its loiter mode, but on the fourth brown out, uh, something caused it to go into a spin. And if you uh, go and watch my video from a few weeks ago, you'll see that it smacked into a rock pretty hard. So the good news is I've now built a new Mini Talon. As pictured here, I've gone with some Mark Q 3D printed parts that a friend printed for me. And I've essentially recycled most of the internal electronics. So the reason I'm doing this video is because quite often people ask me, what's your setup? How do you get such good range and good endurance from your plane? So before I maidened this new plane, I thought, all right, I'll take a bunch of photos, at least to preserve how it looked when it was newly built, because there was no guarantee that after the maiden, it was actually going to come back looking the same way. And hopefully by doing this video, I'll also be answering some of the common questions that I get asked. Firstly, you can see here the 3D printed canopy should make the plane a lot more aerodynamic than the old one used to be. I'll flash a picture up now. Uh, you can see the old one. You know, I had the FPV camera hanging off to the side and it wasn't a particularly aerodynamic design. Underneath, I've used the latest front and rear skids. I'm not sure about how the prop will go because I use a nine inch prop and using this rear skid means I'm not using the one and a half inch long piece of plywood that normally would stick down the bottom of this tail fin. So the prop actually doesn't have clearance off the ground by about an inch. So if it's still spinning as it hits the ground, it will get chipped and damaged. Moving on, I'm just using a couple of pieces of tape to put the hatch in place, both on the top as well as the inner join. And at the back, I'm just going to be using a piece of electrical tape. So here I've pictured the motor and a piece of tape that's on the motor because I see quite a lot of videos out there where video footage has sometimes quite bad amounts of jello in the footage. And I always balance the can of the motor before I've even put a prop and the prop nuts on. So I'll spin the motor up to about 50% throttle, move around a chunky piece of tape by a few degrees at a time until I find a sweet spot where the motor produces the least amount of vibration in the fuselage. And I'll put my finger on a particular place that I'm interested in. So in this case, up the front on the camera platform itself. And once I found the, the sweet spot, as far as reducing vibration goes, I could still detect just a small amount of vibration. So I then varied the amount of tape on that spot. I put a little bit more tape on, I thinned it out, and eventually I ended up with what you see here, which actually completely eliminates any vibration from traveling more than a few inches up the fuselage. Of course, when you put a balanced prop on, uh, the combination of the motor and the prop might cause resonance again, and then it's a matter of just slowly turn that prop a few degrees at a time until you find that sweet spot where the combination of your balanced motor and your balanced prop causes the least amount of vibration. The antennas for my L9i receiver are displaced not only in a slight V shape so that as the plane banks left to right you've still got one that's vertical but also slightly displaced front to back so that even with the plane pitching forward or back you've still got one that's vertical as well. Here I'm just showing where I've mounted the GPS on the new build. That's to get it away from all the electronics down the back, especially the ESC. It used to take me up to five minutes to get a lock in a new location but now I get a lock within 30 to 60 seconds. I'm using the same VTX that I had on my previous plane, a AMWay unit with the fan on top. The same antenna as well, uh, it's the only one I've got with a 90 degree bend already on it and it's been working great for range. It's a new RC timer gimbal motor that I've had to put on. The previous one was also brand new but uh, unfortunately didn't survive the crash. Moving on to a top view, so you've got the Cyclops Tornado OSD and flight controller units in the middle there. Zooming in you can see that uh, I'm using an L9R, I highly rate these receivers. They've got very sensitive antennas which can easily do 10 to 12 Ks range with just standard antennas on your radio. Uh, you can also see there up the top I've got the little control board for the flight controller. 
I've got a bunch of ferrite cores as well for any cables that come from a fair distance away. So uh, from the top, the orange single wire is actually the control cable for my roll gimbal. And I've put a ferrite bead on there just to reduce any RF interference going into the receiver itself. And you can see the other ferrite cores as well for the aileron servos, as well as the one coming from the ESC. In the middle, tucked in just above the flight controller, is a piggyback 12 volt step down straight into an LC filter, and that provides nice clean power for the whole video side of the flight controller and VTX, as well as the FPV camera. In this shot I'm just showing the ESC tucked down the back there underneath the antennas, and the current sensor that you can see in the foreground. So that was just a rough overview of my build, pretty similar to the build I had before other than moving the GPS really and using some 3D printed parts. I also quite often get questions about whether I use a ground station because I get such good range out of what seems to be quite basic equipment. And the answer is no, I don't. Um, I use my neck and head essentially as my ground station tracking the plane because as you can see here I now use a fairly cheap diversity receiver. Uh, this one's a Eosheen RX5808 Pro Plus I believe and I've been using a crosshair antenna from True IC now for about five years and recently with the diversity receiver I've been able to add an Omni as well and at the moment I'm just trying out one of these ion antennas from Vaz and it's been pretty good just flying my mini quad around so I'll probably stick with this setup for quite some time. So this is the maiden flight after I've finished building my new plane. Normally I wouldn't launch it in pilot assist mode. You can see there a little PA at the bottom center of the screen uh, on the OSD. Uh, and the reason for that is that you know, if you haven't tested a uh, pilot assist mode or stabilized mode a little bit higher up, um, you aren't 100% sure that it's not going to nosedive or suddenly climb. Uh, and the last thing you want is launching it in a mode you're not familiar with and uh, potentially stalling the plane or nosing it down into the ground. So you can see here the roll gimbal is smoothing out the video quite nicely. The FPV camera footage in the corner there is certainly rolling around a lot more than the uh, HD camera footage. And essentially what I'm aiming to do with a maiden flight is to take it out of any stabilized modes. So in a moment I'm going to be turning back around towards myself and uh, I'll be turning off the pilot assist mode to fly full manual. And what I'll be aiming to do is to maintain my preferred cruising speed of around 60 to 65 kilometers per hour and trim it out so that the wings stay level and the altitude stays reasonably stable without having to put a lot of input in on the sticks. So at this point I'm modulating the throttle just to try to maintain that speed between 60 to 65 k's an hour and uh, trimming the plane to get rid of a roll. I think it was rolling to the right as well as trimming the pitch slightly uh, just to try and get it to f maintain altitude. So here I've got a slightly longer run to uh, do the same thing. Speed's good. Altitude isn't changing too rapidly. I'm probably still just trimming the, uh, the elevator slightly here. Sometimes the plane will climb or drop suddenly just because of um, updrafts and thermals and losing lift. And that can't be helped. But here it's looking pretty steady. 120 meters around my cruising speed and holding pretty still. So now that I've got my trims set pretty well, 
The next job is to land the plane and certainly with the Cyclops flight controllers they need to know where your normal trim positions are so that when you flick them into pilot assist modes which are fly by wire it knows to take your new trim settings as the center essentially. So here I'm lining up for landing and it's a lot more gusty than the HD camera looks as you can see in the little FPV camera feed plane is wagging all over the place and I'm just trying to get it settled down into the ground effect. Unfortunately the slope is actually downhill in this direction so uh, it is quite difficult to get the plane down uh, exactly where you want it and it just keeps flying and flying. And here you see the plastic 3D printed camera mount for my HD cam snapped on the very first landing. So uh, I've since had to replace this camera platform with a metal one, the one I was using before, and uh, it's much more steady now. Thanks for watching this video of both my setup as well as the maiden flight. I'll include just a little bit of footage from the next day as well when it was nice and sunny and the plane was trimmed out nicely. With you.